Hey guys, and welcome back to our YouTube channel, Mastering the Wedding Photography Biz. I'm Hunter. And I'm Sarah. And today we are going to discuss one simple trick that you can do to increase trust with your visitors on your photography website. And since increased trust will almost definitely lead to increased leads, this simple change is a no-brainer, especially for newer wedding and portrait photographers. So we're going to do a little pop quiz here at the start of this video. When someone lands on your website, what do you think is the very first thing they should see? Now, a lot of you might say that the first thing they should see is your very best image, but honestly, we don't think that that's necessarily it. And some of you might think that it's your business name or your logo, but we don't think that's it either. And maybe you're guessing now that it's your pricing information or a list of your services, but again, we don't think that's the first thing that people should see when they visit your website. In reality, we think that the first thing that someone should see when they enter into your website is you. After all, the thing that makes the biggest difference between your photography business and every other photography business that you are gonna compete against, it's not your camera gear, it's not your photography style, or even how you edit your photos, it's you. And if you've been watching our videos or attending our workshops for very long, then this probably doesn't surprise you at all. We say all the time that you are the biggest difference in your photography business, and you know this is true if you've seen our photography business basics workshop when we talk about naming your business when we say that because you are the biggest difference something like probably 90 percent of wedding and portrait photographers are going to be best served by naming their business after themselves just like we did with hunter and sarah photography and that's why when you go to our website once you enter our homepage and you scroll beyond the header the very first thing that you see is a photo of hunter and i However, not every photo view is created equal and not every photo is going to accomplish the purpose of this equally well. And so we're gonna chat about the best practices for the image of you that should open up your photography website. Now, when it comes to the very first photo that, that you put of yourself on your website, we think there are a few things that are important about this photo. Of course, it should be professional and match the quality of images on the rest of your website. I mean, you're a professional photographer after all, but there's more to it than just that. So even if this list sounds a bit unexciting or like we're boxing you in a little bit, we think there are four things about this first photo that are going to make it most effective. One, you should be looking at the camera. Two, it should be a headshot or at the very least cropped right around your waist. Three, you should be smiling. And four, you should be holding your camera. And we're gonna break down why we recommend each of these things. Now, for starters, the most important thing is that you should be looking at the camera. In other words, your potential clients should be able to make like eye contact with you when they look at this photo. That's because humans convey their emotions through eye contact. So if someone can see your eyes, they are more likely to trust you. And we're not just speculating or guessing on that. We actually found a peer reviewed study published in an academic journal that experimented with Airbnb listings. So in one listing, guests could see the profile picture of the host looking at the camera. In other words, they could make eye contact with that host of that Airbnb listing. Now in the other listing, they saw that same listing, but this time they couldn't see the host's eyes. Now after 300 plus participants took place in the experiment, they found that the listing with eye contact in the profile picture led to higher bookings. In other words, people felt more comfortable trusting a total stranger online because they were able to see their eyes. So here's a little mini experiment for you. Which of these pictures of Sarah do you feel like you know better? Which one do you trust more? Now, maybe you're a little bit biased because you've been watching our videos and you've seen lots of photos you already know and trust Sarah, but repeat this experiment either with these photos or with other photos and show them to your friends who don't know the people in the photos. And our guess is that people will probably trust people more when they can see their eyes. Now, to be honest, Sarah likes the photo of her not looking at the camera better, but for the purpose of establishing trust with website visitors, we think the one with the eye contact is more effective. Now that leads us right into the next best practice that the photo should be a headshot or at the widest from like a half body shot. And that's because a full body and especially like a wide landscape shot makes your face so small that it's going to be hard for people to see your face and relate to you. Now, this has probably happened to you before where you get a friend request or a follow request and you don't recognize the name of the person. And so what do you do? You go to their profile and you try to look at their profile picture. Now, I don't know if this has happened to you, but if I go to do that and their photo is some like super wide landscape in of them in front of, you know, some scenic backdrop and their face is like this big, what's your first thought? 
I have no idea who this person is. That's like the opposite of communicating and establishing trust in that split second that you have when a visitor first lands on your website. Mm -hmm. Now the third best practice is for you to be smiling. Even if you're not like the most smiley person in the world, smiling communicates friendliness and warmth. And to be honest, people want to work with people who seem nice. When Hunter and I used to shoot professional headshot sessions, we'd occasionally have both men and women tell us that they didn't want any smiling photos for their headshots. And we would gently recommend that they do a few of each and inevitably we would look at their gallery and see that they ended up downloading both or totally ignoring the stone face images and instead use just the smiling ones. Now this is anecdotal, but this was because I was talking to a recruiter in college one time and they basically said, yeah, people want to work with people who look nice and friendly. And so although they try not to let it make, you know, bias their decisions, sometimes they would lean more towards people who just look like they're fun to be around. Sort of the same principle here. Um, the fourth and final recommendation we have for this photo is that you be holding a camera in your hands for this first photo. And this isn't so you can flex on your clients and like show them how big your camera and your lenses are, but it's so you can clearly communicate to them, hey, the person whose site you're visiting right now and who is potentially going to take your photo, it's me. Hi, I'm the photographer. We cannot tell you how many times we've done a website audit with one of our coaching students and their first picture has been something really cool and artsy with them like walking through a field with their back to the camera or like sipping coffee in a coffee shop. Now is that a great photo that conveys part of their personality? Absolutely. But if I've never been to your website before and I don't know who you are, I'm not going to be positive that that's a photo of you or if that's a photo that you just took of one of your clients during a lifestyle session. And don't get us wrong, we don't think that every photo on your website needs to meet all four of these criteria. And in fact, really just the first photo they see of you probably on your homepage and then maybe the first photo they see on your About Me page and every other photo of you on your website can be as creative as you'd like. And the, honestly, the more personality it shows, the better. But again, just for that first photo, your goal is to really clearly communicate to your website visitors, hey, this is me. I'm the person behind the camera who you might hire to take your photos, and I promise I'm not a creep. <laughs> now, if this one simple trick just like blew your mind, keep in mind that this is just one of dozens of updates that we often give our coaching students at the end of a website critique. And while that two-on-one website critique with us costs hundreds of dollars and is really only available to our students who sign up for recurring monthly coaching, if you think that your website could just do a better job of converting visitors into leads, then trust us, you are definitely not alone. Your website is sort of like your first impression with potential clients, and they are going to decide in like less than five minutes whether they're going to inquire with you and give you a chance to sell to them, or exit out of your tab and forget that you exist. So if your website isn't set up to take your visitors on a pre-decided customer journey and actually get them to take the actions that you want, then whatever marketing you're doing right now could be wasted. And that is why Hunter and I are hosting a workshop next week called Website Essentials, how to build a simple photography website that actually gets you leads. Not only is this just like a fraction of the cost of a two-on-one website critique with us, but we are including so much more than we could possibly cover in just a one-hour coaching call. Now, this two-hour workshop is going to cover everything from the most basic and foundational reason of why you even have a website in the first place to how to set up that customer journey that we were just talking about, no matter what template you use or what platform you actually have your website hosted on. And we're also going to talk about how your website is going to grow and change over time, but which pages are essential to every photographer and which ones might only be for certain photography businesses. And we're also going to discuss all of the visuals that make a photography website effective. And then at the very end of the workshop, we are just going to hit on all of those common mistakes that we see week in and week out doing the website critiques for our coaching students. Now, this live workshop is going to be hosted this coming Tuesday, As July, in like five days from now, <laughs> July 25th from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And tickets are for sale right now for half off if you buy it before the workshop itself. Then after July 25th, that replay will still be available for purchase on our website, but at full price. So if you're watching this video after July 25th, don't worry, all of this great information is still accessible to you. But if you're watching it beforehand, this is your opportunity to get all of this great stuff for half off because we just love seeing your smiling faces when we go live. But um, if your website, like we said, isn't consistently converting those visitors into hot leads that are inquiring directly in your inbox, 
this might be the time to invest in making your website better. And keep in mind, we're teaching principles that are gonna be applicable to any and every website you build over the course of your growing business. And either way, we are gonna see you guys next week with more photography business content. And as always guys, thank you for watching. If you wanna get more great content like this delivered directly to your inbox, then you can use the link in the description below, the other link to sign up for our four photography newsletter. When you sign up, we are gonna send you a copy of our ebook, Five Essential Tips for Turning Your Side Hustle into a Full-Time Photography Business, just as a free gift to you for signing up. And of course, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below if you have any questions, all those other YouTube algorithm things. Till next time.